Hi, I'm Noelle Stensrud, and we're doing some uh, interviews, and we're going to tell the history of the Chisago Lake schools, and we're going to interview some of the people that are were integral in making this a great school district. And one of them today is Don Bungham. And Don was our superintendent from 1969 to 1987, 18 years, right Don? That's right. And today we thought we'd turn the tables. Now we've heard that you've done a lot of interviews of veterans. Yes. How many have you done? Uh, over 200. Over 200 interviews. And they're in the uh, national... They're in the local county historical society. Okay. Very good. So today we're turning the tables on it. You, mm -hmm. and you're going to be the one interviewed, okay? Yes. Okay, so take us back to the year before you came, and, or, or you can start by how you came, but then take us back to when you were, uh, when you came here, how you got here, because okay. I know you came from Minnetonka yes. to Chisago Lakes, so tell us about that. Okay. Uh, Coming here was uh, a surprise to me because I hadn't anticipated that I was going to move uh, at that year uh, because I was enrolled in the university uh, graduate program and uh, I uh, didn't, didn't expect to move anyhow. One Saturday morning uh, in June, mm -hmm. I got a call from Dr. Hubda and uh, I didn't know him he didn't make any uh, you know pretense about applications or anything and he called me and uh, he, he introduced himself and uh, where he was from and uh, I thought what does he want well he told me he says we have got your papers out of the State Department of Education because at that time they did some uh, placement services. So uh, he said, we'd like to interview you. Oh, well, I told him, I says, I really wasn't seriously looking for a job at that time, but now we'd really like to see you and uh, we sure would uh, like to interview. And uh, I said, well, I asked my wife, I says, do you want to go for a ride tomorrow? <laughs> she says, where? I said, to, up to Lindstrom. And she says, is that some kind of a boonie place? <laughs> and she uh, said, well, yeah, I, I, let's go and see what the circumstances are. Well, we, we ended up, and I asked him, well, when do you want to interview? Tomorrow. Really? And I said, tomorrow? That's Sunday. And uh, so I said, well, he said, that's the only day we can get all of the board members together. So it was so, going to be an official interview, not just an initial interview. No, an official interview. Okay. And so we came up Sunday at 1 o'clock and we said, uh, uh, we met some people on the way and my wife happened to get introduced and she could spend some time with the former superintendent in Lindstrom, Elder Larson. Mm -hmm. And so she got separated and he gave her a real sales job about this community. <laughs> well, that helps. That your helps. wife's got to be on board or That's you're right. not going to come. <laughs> so I interviewed a couple hours or so, and we went back home and we said, well, what do you think? And she said, well, let's just wait and see what happens. So uh, we got, uh, the next day I went to work at Metatonka High School. I was a principal. Uh, assistant principal there and uh, I got a call uh, from Dr. Hubden. Mm -hmm. He said, we want you to be our superintendent. They had agreed on the pay and all the other things uh, that kind of went into that. Mm -hmm. And so she uh, uh, or he said, well, I says, I'm under contract here with Minnetonka. 
and I can't do anything until I get released from my contract. And uh, I'd been there a couple of years, and uh, so uh, I'll have to ask them. So I uh, talked to the superintendent there, Dr. Ted Foote, and uh, I t told him that I had this offer and uh, could I get a release from my contract. And he probably said, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> but anyhow, he, he said, uh, um, yes, I'll take it to the board. And they had a board meeting like Wednesday, and this was Monday. So uh, I, uh, they said he would do it, and he uh, took it to the board. I was there, and they asked me a few questions and so on and so forth. So we got that taken care of, and then... Uh, uh, so I had a question. You were a super... I didn't realize you were the uh, assistant principal, but you had been a superintendent. I'd been Hector. a superintendent for five years before that, but I went into Minnetonka to primarily get an education. Uh, be, a at the university? Yeah, you mean at to the be university. Able to be closer. Okay, yeah, gotcha. so that was... Okay. And um, so, I yes, I had uh, uh, experience at a little town of Welcome and then also at Hector. Okay, sure. So those were my previous superintendencies. Anyhow, uh, the position up here, at least... You know, they had, they did a good sales job, mm -hmm. and uh, I was serious about coming because it was an opportunity to put together a new dis new district, right. and uh, this was the largest consolidation in Minnesota at that time. So, okay, so I know that consolidations are fairly commonplace now, yes. but how? Tell us, like, why it was the largest, <coughs> excuse me, the largest one ever in the state of Minnesota at that time. Yes, well, uh, the uh, school districts mainly, uh, this was a school, Lindstrom was a, a functioning school, and Chisago City was a functioning school, and uh, they technically did not have to consolidate okay. because they had decent programs uh, going on in their schools and the athletic uh, activities were very important at that time. Highly competitive. The, highly they? competitive, yeah. especially between Chisago and Lindstrom. Sure. And they were, the ball games were sold out and filled up the spaces. So it's... Uh, so, okay. The, the, it was the largest one in Minnesota. That right. Was. Okay, so what brought them to that? I think this is really an important question, but what, what brought the two cities to decide? Who, who was, what was the impetus behind combining, and, and why did they do it at that time? I can't fully answer all of those because there had been going on in uh, this area about the two schools getting together and they had a previous vote. Yeah, uh, many years before. Yeah, many, many yeah. Like 20 so years before or the something? idea was there. Okay, cooking. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, the, some of the boards uh, said maybe we should do this, so they supported it and uh, uh, it finally went through after several votes, but uh, in October uh, or November of uh, 60, 1968 is uh, when they voted, and it was going to be in effect of June of 19 or July of 1969. And that's right when you came. That's when I came. So okay. all so, of the consolidation votes and stuff were done. So do you think it was because our communities are so close together? Or do you think it was an economy thing where they could save money? Uh, or was it the future? They're looking to the future and we weren't going to be able to sustain two schools. What do you think? I think you hit it 
uh, on, the, on the news, so to speak. Both schools had need for a new high school. Okay. And that kind of pulled the decision together and said, if we're going to build a high school, we should only build one, not two. Very, yeah. So. And what, uh, where, was the area growing at the time? Yes, it was. Okay. And the future looked good. Okay. Uh, about growing. And uh, so they, I have to give them credit. Uh, uh, they uh, went ahead and the vote was not overwhelming, but uh, it was enough votes to say we're going to consolidate. Did they make a, did they, how did they convince the community that this was going to be good? Lots of meetings and uh, I think the, um, uh, I wasn't here at that time so sure. I don't know but all of the details. Heard. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, all of the details. It's, uh, they um, uh, wanted to. Uh, well, I kind of lost my thought here. That's okay. Uh, so okay, so the, they the, voted to combine, and you told me a fun. You told me when I when I asked you to do this, you told me what happened to the other superintendents because each oh. community had their own uh, own yeah. superintendent and their own school board. Well, the, the agreement was that we will not hire either of the current superintendents. So they had to leave and they did that cooperatively. <laughs> so Don, after you, when you, they had to combine the superintendent. Uh, they had two superintendents and two school boards. Yes. So the so you said that they had both agreed not to stay. Where did they go? Well, one went up to Roseau, uh, to the hockey town, uh -huh. and another one went up to Cass Lake, which was predominantly an Indian school. So they got us pretty far away from Chisago, as yes, you can they did. get, in the state they of did. Minnesota. Right. <laughs> okay, and so then what happened to the boards? Did uh, they combine them, or did they elect a new school board, or what? Yes, they, the, part of the issue uh, in uh, November, the voting issue on the districts, they had voted uh, board members of the new school. So was it three and three? Three from Chisago and three from Lindstrom, uh, kind of? I, well, you had approximately, okay. I'm, not, I'm not positive on, mm -hmm. on that, but mm -hmm. um, we had a good representation on the board and, uh, uh, well, I have them listed here. And uh, the new board was cons uh, consisting of uh, Dr. Gordon Hobda. He was one of the leaders and spokesmen. Uh, for the for the uh, issue, okay. and um, Stig Larson was a person who worked at uh, uh, a company in uh, uh, a law firm in the city. Okay. Uh, he was vice chair. Warren Moody was a farmer who lived. If you've ever been by the, and you may have pictures of. His barn, which was a round oh, barn. The round barn, Moody that, Barn. Sure. Moody Barn, mm -hmm. that's where. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, Dave Larson. Dave Carlson. Carlson, excuse me. Dave okay. Carlson was a. Uh, 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 he had a business of his own, of uh, a tin business, so okay. to speak. And then Bucky Anderson, he worked for the Minnesota Highway Department in Forest Lake. And then Harold Karnowski was a uh, person who managed a lumber yard, local lumber yard here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that was the board at that time. And uh, they had done a lot of work from the time of the election in November until June when I came. Don, I think where we left off, you were telling me how you came, you, you and your wife decided you were going to come to Chisago Lakes and make it better. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what did you, what, what was the setup when you got here? The setup was, uh, well, let me go do it by building. Okay. Uh, the, my office was in the primary school building, which 
Chisago City had built rather, you know, not many years before. It was a nice building. And uh, we uh, used that as the office for the administration at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, the uh, junior high was in Lakeside building. That was the junior high. So that would be like district. seventh and eighth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Do you yeah, recall? seventh, uh, seventh, seven eighth, and, eight. and ninth. Oh, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. And uh, uh, the Lindstrom School had a elementary in it, uh, one through six, and oh, really? And uh, uh, high school, ten, eleven, and twelve. So there was no elementary and primary in those days, or was there two elementaries? There was uh, two elementaries. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, that was the way we started. Okay. And uh, uh, the Lindstrom uh, building uh, had the, uh, the old uh, Chai High building. We used that for a, uh, uh, <clears throat> a um, elementary K-6. And that was built in when did you say? That was 1916. 1916, okay. So they, and uh, it, was, it was a building that looked good, but it was not very functional. Okay, uh, yeah. And it really required uh, replacement and, and uh, the windows were not very well insulated and the uh, custodian they had a tough time keeping that place clean and okay uh, keeping but, the boilers running and the yes everything <laughs> everything yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it was, okay so then your your task when you got here then was to, We're going to try know, to get the community to get behind a high school. Right. That Tell was, us about that. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the board had talked about a high school and the need for one, and that was the primary uh, motivation for uh, the bond issue, was to uh, have a new high school. Mm -hmm. And they had hired an architect, Armstrong Torsa Golden Rydeen was her name from Golden Valley. Okay. And uh, so we started working on a uh, high school. And uh, when we say working, we said, you know, what they, they were very good architects. And uh, we had meetings of uh, with the teachers and uh, others to say, uh, what kind of a school do we want? Uh, what do you want in there? And <clears throat> how big do you want it? And uh, then we had uh, sessions where they would meet with different departments in the high school and develop their plans according to what... Did you do the public meetings like they do nowadays, too, or did you just had, deal with the teachers? No, we had some of those, you know, uh -huh. as we pretty well figured out what we wanted. Okay. And we also had the job of finding a place where that building should be. And where? Did, how did you find the land? Well, we found the land and we searched over uh, a good part of the district. But the land was kind of a, an issue between uh, uh, where to put it. And uh, we ended up in the, with that first issue. Uh, there were people that said we should have it closer to Chisago uh, than Lindstrom. And uh, <laughs> the age old, <laughs> where they built the yeah. hospital, and it right? Was, <laughs> it was north. It was the Carl, uh, Carl, who was, the land, it was uh, about a mile north of Chisago on road, uh, the Lofton Avenue okay. Road. sure. And uh, it was uh, 
about 65 acres of land. Is it still not built on? That's no, there's, well, there are some houses on it. Are there? Yeah. 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 Okay. But, uh, I we kind got of know a, where that is. You know, a good deal. I think we paid a thousand bucks an acre or something like that. That's what you were going to buy? Or we you were didn't going have... to buy. Okay. Yeah. And we got to, you know, hold on it until uh, the bond issue. Uh, so, uh, passed and it didn't. And we uh, put together a, p a proposal for uh, the high school and the architects were used to working with schools in the cities and uh, other areas. Uh, it was on the Carl Strand Farm, and it was for $4,290,000. That was the land and the high school? No, that was just... Just the land? Just, just the high school. Just the high school, not the land. No. no. Okay. And um, so uh, the vote was uh, held on March 31st of 1970. Okay. So that was within the first year... In, of you when you got here? Yeah. See, I came in 69 and mm -hmm. 70. So mm -hmm. that was uh, a, uh, we thought it was a kind of a dreaded outcome. And so we kind of had to start over. So it didn't pass. No, it got bombed. <laughs> it really did. So it got, what do you mean bombed? It got de defeated by... Uh, I don't have the... Just kind of from your memory. No, but it, it, it was defeated by probably 30 to 70% uh, 30 to, uh, Oh, that's, that's a bomb. So, we're, we're, yes. <laughs> so, so, okay, so were there letters to the editor and all that stuff going? Or, I mean, some. Yeah, yeah. Phone calls Why to you? Why do you have it out here? And uh, the doctor... How they wanted it out there for one thing, uh, because uh, Lindstrom had the golf course. Okay, it was by the, the, that yeah. was the existing golf course now, right where the high school is, right next to it. They, right that next was to already it, there. Right. Okay, and uh, he said that golf course is enough to have people be interested in developing the south part of the district, uh, and. Uh, we need something over in Chisago, and they would say that would be on the north side of the district. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so uh, we... Turf wars. Yep. Yes. Uh-huh. And so we said, we're defeated. Uh, what should we do? Well, the issue came up of uh, saying, maybe we don't have the right architects. Oh. So... Uh, we discussed that for a while, and uh, pretty soon uh, uh, we got more serious about it, and we started interviewing architects mm -hmm. because they can make a huge difference in cost savings. In cost mean? savings yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we knew that we had good architects, but they were a little expensive. So. Mm -hmm. So you ended up with a new architect. New architect. Did they cut the price and redo it, or what did yes, they? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They, and he drew up plans and showed them to us. Well, first of all, we interviewed more than one architect. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We interviewed about four of them, I think. Uh huh. And so we ended up selecting uh, Wally Jarvie. Uh, oh yeah, oh, Ken Jarvie. Ken Kenneth, Wally, Kenneth Wally Jarvie. I got it. Okay. He was a he was a Finlander, mm -hmm. and he'd done a lot of schools in Minnesota, and uh, uh, he built you know decent buildings, and uh, so we ended we did end up with him, and uh, we went through some of the same uh, things we did with the Armstrong uh, architects. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, we, we did, as I say, some of the same things about planning the building. And he came up with this original 
building that we that we have finally, today. Yeah. Okay. So did he stick with you through all? Now you went and tried again for a bond referendum, and again, did you tweak it every time? What did you? End yes, up doing? we did. We had to tweak some and take some off, and uh, you know, change it. And uh, uh, but we kind of knew, and, and at the that the high school was still number one. For, from the board standpoint and a lot of the community. So, uh, but we couldn't pass that. We ended up uh, with about five issues on some modification of, of their uh, plans. And, uh, uh, Did the votes ever get any closer? Or yes, they got closer. Closer and closer. We get, it got down to 31 votes. Oh, my goodness. We were defeated. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, the board, uh, I have to give them credit. They, they could have said, you know, Don, why don't you leave and we'll try it with somebody else. Okay. Fortunately, they didn't. Yeah, fortunately. Fortunately, you know, yeah. from my perspective. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it takes perseverance, we, though, to stick there and keep bringing oh, yeah. it up to the public. And <laughs> yes, yeah, it so, does. And they uh, uh, hung; they kind of hung with me. That's great. And we'd go back to work and say, "Well, maybe next time." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, fortunately, they uh, they didn't can me, and uh, also uh, the. Uh, we had a petition during this time, I'm not sure which year, but we had a petition created by a couple of uh, anti-school or anti-high school, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it would be Ken Joyce and uh, uh, the other one was uh, mm-hmm. Curtis Lynn. Kurt, yeah, okay. And uh, they wanted to get me, get rid of me. Yeah. And the issue uh, was created by visiting a lot of the bars and community. And that's they, they were easy to sign something. Get, that's where they got all their signatures. <laughs> yeah. They, they would get, get them, you know, sign so, this. <laughs> so what finally tipped? Now you're, okay, you're now, you've done seven of them, right? Or was yeah. it six? And then no, seven. Seven. I even got the dates here. Yeah. Okay. There were seven issues that we brought to the people, and uh, they were in, in this order. March thirty-one seventy. That was the first issue of four million two hundred ninety thousand. Mm-hmm. And um, January 5th of 71, we went for an elementary school uh, issue for 190,000. So, well, 1,900,000, mm-hmm. excuse me. Mm-hmm. And then on the 26th of September in 1972, we brought an uh, issue, uh, it was a high school issue of Two million six hundred thousand, and then November fourth, nineteen seventy-two. Uh, it was another high school of two hundred, uh, two million four hundred and seventy thousand. Uh-huh. And we had to adjust that, uh, you know, the issue, in order to run it. Well, if you had to adjust had a different the number. issue, it'd have a different yeah. number. Uh-huh. And then uh, on. Uh, uh, May 8th, 1973, we had a high school issue of 650, 2,650,000. In December of 20th of 73, we went for a high school issue of uh, (laughs) 2,950,000. And that's the one that we were 31 votes short. And so so we, that was a sad day. Yeah. So we had to put together another issue, and uh, that's when we voted on two issues in the same uh, same ballot. 
and the one that one part of the ballot was for an elementary school of two million one hundred and seventy four thousand five hundred and forty five and a high school issue of two million nine hundred thousand and at that issue the high school issue uh, we first of all put that issue up and we were taken to court and uh, uh, by uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Joyce and uh, Curtis Lent and they took us to court saying that we were confusing the people by having two questions on the ballot and so away with the whole community and it, and they didn't take us to court until about a week before the vote. Oh my goodness. So we had to all run down to Stillwater. That's where the court case uh, was. And uh, the judge was Mr. Bakke. And uh, they had a lawyer from the cities. We hired Pete Popovich who was a school attorney, and he had done a lot of work with the School Boards Association, and he was really sharp, and he uh, was very, very good. And so the, uh, the uh, court case was in the morning, and uh, we had a lot of community people down there. And they were protesting, walking the streets, carrying signs. <laughs> oh and, my goodness! And they were they were really into it because I think you know, they probably knew that we're getting towards the end if we're going to do anything. Uh, and uh, so they they pro were protesting the court case. It was the seventies. Yeah, <laughs> everything was a <laughs> protest. Right. So. Uh, it was interesting just to see the whole thing. Well, the the uh, <clears throat> vote was the next week. Uh, so it just, you know, there was only about six or seven days between uh, the court case and the, and the vote. So we didn't know what would happen and uh, what the effect would be, but there was a nice turnout of parents and students and others, and uh, uh, the vote was uh, carried to support the high school issue by about 400 votes. So that issue of the court case and people voting on a clear-cut issue, but uh, so we got the high school. Huh. Did you celebrate uh, that night? Huh? Did you celebrate that night? I think so. <laughs> in, the, in the court case, uh, <clears throat> uh, they had to, uh, the, the, the judge asked for the uh, opposition to, or for the elementary school to present their the case and uh, why, why, they, why they're confusing the people. And uh, our attorney, Pete Popovich, just picked their whole thing apart. Uh, he, uh, you know, he said, people can, up there can understand two questions. And uh, he brought issues uh, about the case, and he said, you know, it's only next week, and, and the bond vote, and he said, we got to get things cleared up. And so that was one of the points. Uh, the intelligence of the people up here, <laughs> he gave more credit for. Very good. <laughs> and he uh, uh, kind of made some you know, it was almost a ridiculous case from his standpoint. And uh, <clears throat> so he would say something and uh, the people in the, in the uh, audience would uh, laugh a little and 
agree with him because he, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, he knew what he was doing and he was a very... So what did the judge say in the end then? The judge says, case dismissed. <laughs> you, go and have your vote. Go ahead and vote. <laughs> you know, and he did, you know, he just did it right, right <coughs> after, you know, he was there and he didn't hesitate at all. And he just said, case dismissed. Uh, and you can vote. Okay. People can understand two questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that was a good, good term for us. And uh, we did pass that by about 400 votes. So. so you started digging right away? Well, you can't do that uh, because you still have to have a, a final plan. Okay. And... Uh, but we knew we could go ahead, and we started work on that immediately. Okay. And but you, we had done enough previous previous work so that we could do a lot of a lot of things because we had worked it over in, in a couple issues. So. Mm -hmm. So how soon was the school done? Well, that was in um, that was in April of seventy four, and we entered the building in. Uh, September of 76. So okay. it takes about two, two, two uh, years to, to get a building. Mm -hmm. And uh, Any regrets on the building? Anything after, after you'd been through all those plans and, and <laughs> in retrospect, were there any regrets on the building or anything that you would have done differently? We probably could have done things differently, but we had worked it over pretty well. And mm -hmm. we felt this is a decent building and uh, uh, we'll go with it, mm -hmm. basically. We didn't have a lot of, uh, and, and we went to work and uh, uh, got, the, got the teachers involved planning it and uh, it did work out, uh, we think, that the school building was uh, pretty acceptable. Mm -hmm. And when, when we had our open houses and showing it, people couldn't believe that we got uh, this building for the money that we, oh, two, million, two million, two million. Yeah, and, uh, that's so, a nice compliment. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So... And that, I think, also uh, kind of prepared us for the future. If they can do this with this, you know, they do a good job. Okay. So that's what was good to feel and hear. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it made the future bond issues much, much easier. Very good. Yep. So, so, so do you think the community, when did they start to heal then, after, you know, after the great well, coming together? <laughs> They, they were very pleased with uh, what they got after a struggle. And uh, they, uh, with some success of both the, uh, in, the, in the athletic area, who started winning, and uh, uh, the th things in the school, they, they felt the students were very pleased to be here. And uh, the principal, Bob Nashi, uh, I thought, ran a good school. We had a good staff. And uh, uh, we really started to do more educating of the students. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, at least I felt that, and, and so did a lot of the other board members. And... Uh, uh, we had very little trouble, as I tell people. I had five years of hell and 13 <laughs> years of hunting. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Because you were here 18 years, yeah? Yeah. So, um, and uh, we really felt that was a real high for the community. And uh, then the board, the board was always, I think, very understanding and very supportive, and they were basically uh, uh, 
for doing good things. And I had uh, the board members, I felt, uh, really carried, carried the situation. They, they became proud of their school. Oh, that's exciting. And so you could bring a, you know, I would bring an issue to them and uh, uh, we'd like to do this. And I had a very cooperative board and uh, uh, they supported a lot of, a lot of things. And uh, once the bond issue was passed and uh, the board members uh, were kind of solid, uh, solidified who was going to be on because we did have a number of changes and uh, in that uh, after the first bond issue we had about three of them leave oh. so we had a change there and I had uh, we had a few board members that were uh, not very supportive but they got on and they saw that we were really working to do something and a lot of those people turned around and said, well, this isn't so bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, they, but the board members that I uh, use, we had uh, Paul Johnson, who was a 3M executive, and he was, he really studied being a board member. And, uh, he kind of kept me straight and uh, uh, what we could do. And so he was one of those rather good leaders. Uh, Eunice Anderson, she's still over in Parmley. Yeah. And uh, she was an excellent member. And uh, as I used to, I used to think, I send out a board agenda and I put on, you know, a background information and so on. And some of them would read it and some of them wouldn't. But Eunice would be the one to read everything and she was ready to come and act. Cool. Mary Ann Cook was another one. And she uh, uh, was from a big family, but she was very supportive of uh, doing things. And she was the uh, lady of the action. Dr. Peter Overgaard, he was the, uh, Paul Johnson was chair of the board for a while, but then he left. And uh, Pete Overgaard was on for about 10 years serving as a, a chair. And he was excellent. I really got to respect him. Uh, some of the others, let's see, Daryl Thompson, uh, he uh, was a person who uh, would keep you in order. He was, if, if he thought something was wrong, he'd go after it. Mm -hmm. What about this and what about that? And you had to, you should have a good answer, otherwise uh, you would, he'd let you know. Uh, let's see, Gordy Dodge. He's a, a psychologist. He lived in Center City. Uh, a very supportive board member. And uh, uh, then we had Elvin Swanson. Elvin was, uh, at the time, he was an anti-school anti thing. Uh, but he got on and he got to be a decent member. <laughs> you know, Jim Hoy. Jim Hoy was uh, uh, a real case. He was he owned the paper and he wrote the paper and oh, everything else. And uh, uh, I talked him into getting on the board. I said, Jim, you should get on the board to really see what goes on. And uh, you know, so he did, and uh, uh, he changed, you know, quite a bit. Sure. Uh, when you see the reality of what really people trying to do good things. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, he was he felt and he's been one of my good supporters. He he sold the paper and he moved to Texas and then he went to Colorado. Sure. I think he's still there. But he, he became a good friend. 
We have a music person in the next one, Joan Chouinard. Oh, yeah. Joan was a music, and she watched out for the music, and her family is all music. Mm -hmm. Both her and her husband are music musicians and so on. Uh, we had an attorney on, Spence, Tom Spence, and uh, he was uh, uh, pretty aggressive, and uh, but he was okay, to, and he was on only for about a year, and then he moved away. Mm -hmm. Ethel Montgomery, very special gal, she was a former teacher, and she uh, conducted the plays, and uh, she uh, put on plays, but she always had to put them on in a gym and share the gym with somebody else. And, and so she was responsible for getting the theater in this building. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing she wanted. She wanted in this building because she was so sick of, of uh, not having plays that she could put on and so this is uh, and I and I and she was a teacher or a former board member who uh, loved to go to meetings and her and I would go to a lot of meetings <laughs> <laughs> so I'd go pick her up and away we go <laughs> Ethel and uh, uh, it was fun so uh, Anyone? I you miss Jim Tuey. Jim Tuey. Jim Tuey was a teacher in White Bear, and uh, he was good. He was a very good supporter of uh, the school. Now, you say issues of uh, board members. I think there, most of them were. Most of the board members were good board members, and even some of those that may have had some uh, issues to settle or find out about, they did change, and they found out we were, excuse me, we were working at uh, something good. Mm -hmm. So I heard this term one time um, that Chisago Lakes, the country club of high schools, you ever heard that term? No. No? <laughs> well, I just had heard that it was like, it was like, it was a compliment. Oh, right? You've never yeah. heard that term. Yeah. Okay. No, somebody, know. somebody was moving up here and they're going, well, I'm going to move to Chisago Lakes. This was maybe in the, I don't recall the time. And they go, oh, yeah. Chisago Lakes is the country club of high of schools. Well, I... How did that come about? I have no idea. I thought maybe... Well, I, I'm just thinking that maybe because the country club is just across no. the street. <laughs> maybe. You know, and, and uh, uh, we've had some good golf golfers come out there. <laughs> maybe. So, so, I don't know. I think it was more the, that catering to, yeah, um, to yeah. that. That's not a bad, education. not bad uh, no. designation or whatever. Okay, no. so this little article you brought in today from 1986 um, with Governor Perpich here visiting our school. Can you tell us why he came and what the bond referendum was that time? That we, was well, we had an addition uh, to the school. It's 3,300,000 dollars which was more than the original building. <laughs> was not <that> something? <laughs> and, uh, and I invited Governor Perpich up, and he was uh, very, well, he said to come away and take a Sunday, it was a Sunday, and uh, was unusual. But he came and uh, we used up his Sunday, and uh, we, uh, we really kind of put on a nice, uh, show of our buildings and what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, I was on the uh, state, well, I was, I was uh, on the state, uh, or I was president of the uh, Minnesota School District, uh, the uh, MASA, it's Minnesota Association of School Administrators. Mm -hmm. And so they invited 
me and anyone in that position to uh, work on the uh, state, uh, state advisory council. And so I got to know him, you know, a little bit, and I could talk with him. And uh, so when we invited him, he came up and uh, he had, and we had done some good things about that he liked. Uh-huh. You know, like we gave, we gave uh, letters to uh, non-athletes if they had appropriate grades and so on. Uh-huh. Academic they, letters. Academic. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And that wasn't a common thing then? No. Oh, that was cool. No. Yeah. And I don't know what else. What, he had a quote in there that he said, um, what did he say? He said... Uh, the Chisago Lake School District will be the oh, school of excellence. And he said, uh, during his talk, he was impressed with the district's fine superintendent and exemplary leadership. Yeah. It's pretty nice. That was, yeah, very, very nice. Uh-huh. But, uh, the, on, on the advisory board for the state, we also had former Governor Cui. Mm-hmm. And he, he was a great individual and, uh, you know, uh, said things that really made sense. And so we uh, enjoyed that. And Governor Perfitch, uh, he would take advice from anybody. And, uh, you know, we were the first school that he went to and gave a nice uh, letter and, uh, 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 well, it was a plaque that he had written up, and uh, it's around here somewhere, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were celebrating, too, that you had added on the pool, and what else? You had yeah. done an addition, and you did the pool, and... Yeah, yeah. and uh, science. Oh, uh, science. Also, it was uh, not music. It was a music. We upgraded the music, and we also upgraded the shop area. Okay. So those three... Things, uh, and that yep. so, so, okay, I have a question. What was your proudest moment as an administrator? Well, I have to say, because we struggled so, it is getting a, a positive vote. That, that kind of freed you up for whatever. I mean, it was, uh, I, I had had so many defeats. Uh, you know, or the board had had, you know, a lot of defeats, and you you can't help but get discouraged. And I said, if this issue doesn't go, I've got to go, because I used all the tricks that I knew and the efforts to keep, get something done. And I said, you know, that's the way I feel. So it just provided me with a, a new a new uh, effort to develop the school itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to do that Mm -hmm. with a good board and a good community. Uh, It was uh, a good staff, you know, they they got into it. Mm -hmm. I used to have uh, board meetings once a month, not board meetings, staff meetings. Okay. And uh, we'd go over issues that I thought were important. And, uh, you know, most of the staff came. Some of them were busy, and you know, but mm-hmm. we uh, developed uh, uh, a good relationship that way. Sure. So. so often administrators leave their job after their job is done. Why did you choose to stay in Chisago Lakes for all these years after you retired? Okay, there were a number of reasons. First of all, uh, we bought, we had a house. We bought that in 1971. And it was a house that uh, belonged to the person who owned uh, the, uh, who owned the Coast to Coast store at that time. And uh, he was moving to Peru, Indiana, and he was going to run a business down there. He went down there, and he found out that Walmart was still on the uh, on the 
uh, uh, the, the, in the same city, and he, <laughs> he says, hey, I couldn't compete against them. Oh. So he came back here, and uh, he's still here. He's still living. Really? There. Yeah. But you had bought his house. I bought his house, uh -huh. and then... And I bought. I picked up the same loan. The house was built in uh, eighty or uh, sixty-seven, and uh, so it, when I bought it, it was about four years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, I picked up his loan, and uh, uh, so that was an easy transaction, and uh, I really appreciated. It. So. Mm -hmm. uh, more I could say on that. Well, I had the house, and the house was very satisfactory, living on the lake in North Center. And uh, then uh, I liked the community, you know. We had had our battles and so on, but the people were good, and they still were, you know, friendly, uh, because uh, I was here long enough to, to develop some uh, something decent that they were proud of and uh, so on. So uh, I thought, and uh, the closest, the, the, the location is excellent from people that want to go into the cities and mm -hmm. take in the, uh, you know, entertainment that's there. And uh, um, that's just another reason that why I, why we stayed here. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, we liked the people, and uh, the school was here, and I still attended a lot of the school functions, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm still here, you know. it's. <laughs> Who took yeah. your job after you left? Uh, Daryl Williams. Oh, Daryl Williams, sure. Yeah. No. Is he still around? No, he's in South Dakota. He's, okay. I think he moved to his wife's farm. Did your kids grow up here then? Kids all grew up here. Another thing... Uh, uh, let, let me tell you uh, that we really feel uh, proud about is that in graduation at that time uh, we had they had to select a speaker to speak to them and my all three of my kids did oh how nice so, yeah that's really nice that's a, that's quite an honor yeah so yeah. That made us feel good, and, and uh, my youngest son, Philip, uh, who's now recovering from a heart attack, but he brought the house down because he's small and, uh, you know, short, and but he was in wrestling, and, you know, but he told how uh, being small gave uh, others, I can't remember exactly how he did, but he says it's made the others, the big ones, feel uh, more proud. And the audience got up and clapped. Oh, how nice, so nice. So what changes have you seen in education since you retired? What I've seen, well, I've had some... Uh, comments here, the uh, education has really, let's say, opened up and, and uh, the private factor, private, the money for private schools and so on and programs uh, that they have now has changed a lot of things. You know, we, when, when I was there, uh, the issue was just kind of operating your school and then now the changes started to be made that private schools could be funded and uh, we uh, uh, had a lot of classes and the college and now the students could Go to go to uh, colleges and pick up college credit. That started when we were there in the high school. In the high school, mm -hmm. and uh, that was very popular. And uh, uh, let's see, um, 
Uh, well, here we have that wolf. Wolf program. Creek. Wolf yeah, Creek. Wolf Creek. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, kids that would drop out now had an opportunity to go to some place where they could get along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was an important thing, and it's still going on. And uh, uh, the district here has taken that into consideration, and they're technically they're members of the of the district and uh, Wolf Creek. Yeah, I think yeah. that we host them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, you were involved in a yeah. lot of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, but it keeps you. It does keep them accountable in it. Yeah, and, and it's a t it's a team effort to get yes, those kids is. through school. Oh yeah, right. Um, what what changes have you seen in our school district? Now you said that, but I mean, um, you know, when you drive around now, what changes do you see? Well, I think the, the they've done some great things here in this school uh, from the standpoint of uh, uh, adding programs, uh, adding, uh, and that includes the exterior of the buildings and putting in the, uh, uh, the the new athletic fields. Mm -hmm. and, and that has been amazing to me to see uh, when they when they put in the uh, what do you call the athletic the turf field the turf field that it, that identified this community more than probably most anything. Here's a little school out there in the country, kind of, and they have an athletic field, you know, that's uh, turf. And how did they do that? Uh -huh. Well, that took some good leadership for mm -hmm. the board mm -hmm. and the administrators and the community to support, and they did. They did, I know. And, and you know, we get, we get noticed and when districts, well, we host a lot of uh, uh, high school league activities, and we we also, if, if uh, uh, other schools want to come and practice, our place is number one because it's uh, you know it's it's that field, and it's used not only for football but for. Uh, Softball and, and other soccer, things, soccer and early and, seasons. Yeah, yeah, right. So mm -hmm. they've really done some wonderful things that way, and just expanding the fields at that same issue. We've got some of the finest facilities for handling, uh, you know. So how many activities. how many acres was the school on when you bought the acres? Uh, Seventy. Seventy, and I think they've used every corner of it now, haven't they? Yes, and well, they, they've added to it too. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the, the land fields. on the west side. Oh, they bought. They yeah, added more land. They added more land. Uh, this was uh, in December, and of course, calling off school or handling snow snow problems and so on was always a big issue and how it got done and so on but usually uh, we would go and it's probably changed a little now but uh, what happened was the issue uh, it's, it was uh, snowing and then it quit uh, and uh, so we had school, but then about 10 o'clock, the snow, it just started to storm, and the snow was coming, and, and at that time, we had uh, a kindergarten, a half day, and the buses were out picking up kindergarten kids, and uh, they couldn't get they, they, they got stuck. So we, we had to make a change. And uh, uh, at that time, several buses were stuck in different parts of the school. We didn't have the radios that we have in, 
now that telling mm -hmm. you know, do this and do that. And uh, uh, we had to call off school. Well, with stuck buses and uh, uh, little kids, they couldn't get home. <laughs> and uh, so we said, we we're going to have to close. And so I, I, I called in and said, you know, we're going to change the plans and we're going to uh, close school. And uh, we, I think I also said, if you can come and help uh, pick up your students, please do. Well, that thing kind of fell apart and people were anxious and angry. And uh, I was here until about eight o'clock that night, you know, just <laughs> handling parents that were really disgusted and mad. Uh, so uh, we finally got everybody home, and uh, I said, went home in the in my car. I just barely got out of the. Uh, I was at still at the. Uh, um, primary school. Oh, really? Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, uh, and the next day I had to go to Chicago to, uh, uh, for some kind of a family thing down there. But um, anyhow, we got everybody home. There were still a lot of dissatisfied people and... and hey. uh, <laughs> Did they think you left town just to avoid the phone? <laughs> no, they didn't, fortunately. They don't know, maybe they didn't realize. But uh, the next board meeting, I knew, I think I had about 50, 50 people there. Oh, on really? my neck. <laughs> I got to get more informed or do a better job of calling off school. Uh, now they and, have all the electronics. That, that was one of the worst days I've had. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it it was not good, and uh, we kind of cleared up the process for calling off school. <laughs> See, yeah, we were with the school districts that we were associated with were almost, with the exception of Forest Lake, that's as far south as any thing that we did, they were, and this is only for about two or three years, they were a competitor. In other words, we would play them in basketball and they were included in the district and regional activity. Hmm. But uh, that soon separated and we went north up to uh, uh, Moose, Moose Lake and uh, so on. And uh, then we got, we developed the uh, Rum River Conference. Now, the Rum River is a long ways west, but the towns that were included were uh, Sauk Rapids, Princeton, uh, 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 Mora, uh, Pine City. Huh? Pine City. Pine, oh yeah, Pine City and Red City. North Branch. North Branch. And those were the ones that uh, we kind of moved into. And uh, we, fortunately, we didn't get thrown in with the bigger schools down in the... How about Taylor's Tucker. Falls? What was your relationship with Taylor's Falls in those days? Um, well, they had a conference of their own after... Uh, uh, a period of time. They they got reoriented and uh, so they got into a, a conference with other little schools mm -hmm. and that they could compete with. Mm -hmm. Although they defeated us in some issues that still bother me. Like what? <laughs> basketball. <laughs> they are very pretty tough in basketball. They were. And, and uh, um, they, they, and they would, you know, that was their big game, beating Chisago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jerry will tell us about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And he, can, he can tell you. Yeah. So, uh, uh -huh. we, you know, but uh, the year of 83, when we went to the state in basketball, 
That was a highlight. And I saw graduates and people from Chisago that I'd never seen before. But they all came to that state tournament and uh, uh, they were so proud and uh, they they followed us all the, all the way, and we came in third in the state. Oh, at that how time. exciting! That was really that oh, was a really yeah. exciting. Highlight. See, we we beat Minneapolis more the really? first game. Really? Yeah. Oh, and, that's and exciting. And nobody <laughs> nobody thought we would ever do that, and then then we played uh, uh, Woodbury. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and beat Woodbury. Yeah, no. No. We lost to Woodbury. Okay. But uh, so that then the last game we had was with Wilmer. Okay. And we beat Wilmer. And came in third place yes. for state. Yeah. That's really exciting yeah. for Chisago Lakes. And yeah. that did more for this district uh, in, in uh, seeing, recognizing uh, their, their efforts. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we really remember that, and uh, you will see a lot of good things about the class of of '83. Uh, oh, that's cute. And that's some cute. of those students, well, uh, one of our biggest players was uh, um, oh, I, his his mother was a teacher here. Okay. And uh, uh, he went to uh, Augustana College in uh, Sioux Falls. And he, then he went to Australia and played ball over there. Really? Basketball? Yeah, basketball. That's really good. In, their, in the, some of their leagues over there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> any advice for the future? Well, of the Chisago Lake School District. Sure. Uh, my advice is to keep doing what you've been doing and look for excellence in all your programs and uh, it'll happen if you you know feel that way and, and preach that way and, and uh, you know work that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I feel good about the uh, things that have been done and that this is a good school, and I was, I'm pleased to have a little bit of part in it. So, I got a big part in it, so know. we thank you because you did. You you contributed many well, years and a lot of leadership, and yeah. we appreciate it. So I'm oh. glad I moved in this community. Yeah, from Minnetonka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there any final thing you'd like to tell our school district? Well, I would like to say. Go Wildcats, <laughs> and also Trojans as you hold.